From the world headquarters of Fox News, it's The Kelly File with Megan Kelly. New developments tonight in the IRS targeting scandal. As we learn, it may be impossible to recover so-called lost emails from the woman at the heart of the investigation. Lois Lerner has repeatedly refused to speak out, asserting her Fifth Amendment rights. So her emails may be the only way we can learn what really happened here. But the IRS is not making it easy. Just last Friday, late in the day, in a multi-page report, they buried the news. We learned that nearly two years of Ms. Lerner's emails vanished when her computer crashed. Then we found out that six other IRS employees' emails apparently went poof. Terrible, terrible computer glitches at the IRS. Now we are hearing that Lois Lerner's hard drive not only crashed, but that it was recycled or wiped clean. Why'd they do that? And today a bombshell report shows one of those six who also lost their emails magically also happened to be a frequent visitor to the White House. And she just so happened to be chief of staff to the former acting IRS commissioner, Stephen Miller, who resigned in the wake of the targeting scandal. But even with all that, remember what the president told our own Bill O'Reilly about the IRS. There were some boneheaded decisions. Boneheaded out decisions. Of, out of a but local no office. mass corruption. Not even mass corruption, not even a smidgen of corruption. Morgan Wright is a cybersecurity expert and CEO of Crowdsourced Information, and Jay Sekulow is chief legal counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice and represents dozens of conservative groups that say they were targeted by the IRS. All right, Jay, I want to start with you on this. Megan. What do you view as the most sure. significant development now? I, th that this, the, the assistant to the commissioner went to the White House 31 times or what? Yeah, well, that's obviously very significant, and the fact that her emails are also gone, uh, as you said, they're, they're no longer in existence. Uh, you've got to ask, and I think it's clear now, we've got six other officials whose emails are also wiped out, but there is one critical email, and this is the connect, Megan, to the White House, and that is there was an email between Lois Lerner and Nicole Flack, and this was the individual that was the uh, chief of staff, and that email said we want to look at making criminal cases against our clients. They had no evidence of it. They said they'd have to piece them together, and then she makes 35 trips to the White House, and it was at the time when there was a lawsuit going on, which of course is still pending, the Hobby Lobby cases, and some of the other conservative groups that had filed suit, including some of our clients. Wait, wait. And they wanted information about that, so wait, it looked like wait, you're, you're, I think yeah. I think we're losing the viewers. So in May of 2013, just so the viewers know, yep. Lois Lerner sends an email to this Flax, Nicole Flax. Yep. That's the one who assists the commissioner. Yeah. Lois says, hey, I just got a call from the DOJ. They are asking who they can talk right. to here at the IRS about Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse's idea that we go ahead and right. criminally prosecute some of these conservative groups who we think may be liars about their political activity. So Lois is calling Nicole saying Correct. this Democrat wants us to work with the DOJ to see about pro criminally prosecute, prosecuting the conservative groups. Right. Nicole Flax writes back and says, I think we should do it. So the, these two have this conversation. Right. Nicole proceeds to go to the White House dozens of times, and now both Lois and Nicole, whoops, had a computer glitch, and we can't get their emails. Do I have it right? Well, yeah, Megan, but there, yes, you do, but there's something else. When that email came out, two days later, Lois Lerner issued the fake apology, and at the same time, Nicole Flax went over to the White House after that email about the criminal charges. So what was the discussion at the White House? What was that about? So this is right as, we'll right as Lois Lerner went public. Nobody amazingly has her emails. Yeah. Right as Lois Lerner went public with this, she was meeting with Nicole about possible criminal prosecutions. Right. Okay, Morgan, let's talk, yeah, let's talk about what's real and what's not real. What they said about Lerner's emails, and I don't have the details about the other six, but they said Lerner sent an email from her desktop. There was a crash. She called up. There's a, she, she emailed. We have evidence that she did complain right. at the time she had a crash. They said, the IRS said in a letter to, to the Congress, emails are, they, send, they, they go to servers. They're not just on your desk tech, but they go to the servers. But then the servers rewrite every six months. And her, we couldn't get the emails off of her fried laptop or desktop. And then the server had rewritten. Why is that not plausible? Well, look, the real issue here, Megan, is that it's not just Lois Lerner. It's the other six. When okay, you have okay one, but that's I, know, I get that. But stick with yeah. Lerner right now. Explain to me well, what is not plausible about that. 
Well, what's not plausible about that is the fact is that she is a high-ranking official. These emails exist not just in her inbox. They exist on backup tapes so that's or the other server. archives. That's the server, yeah, well, right? There's the server, and then once the server operates for a while, then it does a backup of itself, and so those tapes then are archived somewhere. And in the, the IRS commissioner said in testimony during March, Congressman Chavitz asked him about the emails. He said those emails exist, but it's going to take years to get right, to it, but not let me stop you there. Let me stop words. you there. Let me stop you there. That, that's a different kind of evidence, because when the commissioner testified, he said, Yes, we'll give you all. We'll give you all those emails, Lois Learners. He didn't also then say, "Oh, and for every year you're seeking, we definitely have all the emails, and there's been no computer glitches." I think, you know, that's a that's a tough mm. indictment of the commissioner, in my view, as a lawyer. But so that's why I want to stick with you on the computer forensics of it, Morgan. Why is it not plausible that the email? went to a server and after six months the IRS was too cheap to have a you know a lot of memory on a server or whatever it takes and it just rewrites itself yeah it's it's they are so complex. Sorry, I just don't believe it for a couple of reasons. Number one is because they maintain information on taxpayers for years back. Number two, but from the mid-70s right. mid backwards, you can go to the National Archives and get a lot of information. From the mid-70s forward, there's a lot of information. And third of all, I had actually taught a lot of people from the Tax Inspector General for Tax Administration, agents that actually did investigations inside the IRS and were able to get emails five or six years old themselves. So it's kind of not plausible to think that, this, that they all just disappeared. Mm -hmm at the same time and there's no recovery Well, if possible. they're not telling the truth about the servers, then they're in serious trouble. But Jay, it, w what is your evidence that this really, I mean, look what we've seen. Look at HHS and Sibelius yeah. and the healthcare rollout. Look sure. at the VA mess. Is it so implausible that the IRS is such a hot mess that it's got this crappy IRS server that, that, that it rewrites, it never should rewrite. Magically, they always have the records they need to audit us, but when it comes to their yeah. bad behavior, well, it's disappeared. Is it so implausible? Yeah, it is, Megan, because those emails went to other people. So it's not just the IRS. So the Department of Justice, the Federal Election Commission, there were recipients to these emails. So unless all of their emails were also mysteriously wiped out from the servers, and by the way, there's a federal record keeping act here, and you're supposed to keep hard copies of significant data, and this would be certainly significant mm -hmm. data when you're talking about mass criminal indictments against people who's engaged in free speech activities. So those emails went to somebody, somebody has them. The White so House we're going to get them today. in discovery if Let the government doesn't this, produce Jay. them. The White House came out yes. and Jay Carney said, hmm. There are none. He said, you want the communications between Lois Lerner and the White House? We checked. And there's no right. communications between Lerner, no emails between Lerner yeah. and the executive office of the president. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. yeah, except Nicole Flax was now, we know, was the conduit to the White House. So let's get her emails and see if there's emails between Nicole Flax, the chief of staff of the IRS commissioner, and the White House. And I bet you will find those unless their computers crashed as well. You know what I find very interesting, Jay, is that this Nicole Flax, this chief of staff whose emails are gone, mm -hmm. the guy she was chief of staff to, Stephen Miller, he, yeah. he's an important figure. And he's been accused by Congress of directly misleading them. He testified before Congress while the targeting was going on, while the inspector general was investigating right. the IRS, and he knew it, that there was no targeting. Here's a sample of that. This is May of 2013, I think. I did not mislead the committee. I stand by my answer then. I stand by my answer now. Harassment discussion that was part of that question implies political motivation. Um, uh, there is a discussion going on. Uh, there's no political motivation. Let, let me He's trying to explain his earlier answer where he, where he said that there was no harassment of, of conservative groups. And by this point, he'd been caught dead to rights. Yeah. Should have took the Fifth Amendment is what he should have done, because at that point, he couldn't get out if he made a false statement to Congress. But look, I mean, it took them a year to respond to Congress's subpoena to say, we don't have the emails. So th this whole thing is a sham. And, and basically, I think with the situation as it exists right now is it's going to take discovery in a federal court to get to the bottom of this. And I suspect what you're going to find is the conduit to the White House. Now we know, by the way, is a defendant in our lawsuit, Nicole Flack. She's a defendant in our lawsuit. So we're going to get that information as the case moves forward. The ridiculous nature of this is Lois Lerner is one important element, but she is not the most important element. Mm -hmm. We're now finding it went a lot higher than Lois Lerner. Chief of Staff is the number two slot, basically. Quick question before I go. Morgan, do you know what the six other employees, whether their emails and documents are missing from the same time frame as Lois's? 
I think they're missing from a little bit later, but, but Megan, you bring up a point, as both of you being lawyers, in polit political corruption, it's follow the money. Here it's going to be follow the access trail and the audit logs. There will be a paper right. trail. If it was once or twice, that's one thing. But when it's six, that defies, you know, it, it just defies probability. There will be a paper trail of somebody accessing systems, deleting things, and they've got to get in and preserve that information now because without the hard drives, the only thing you have left is the paper trail. Mm. Very interesting, guys. That's we'll what continue the FBI to should be it. investigating. Thank you both. Thanks, Megan. Well, Thanks, after Megan. all these bombshells in the IRS scandal, how do you think the story is playing out on the media outlets across this country? Brent Bazell has some eye-opening answers next.